Hello, I am Lisa Hennessy, and this is episode 45 of Knit, Pray, Crochet. If you've been following along, I've been making hair scrunchies, and so I want to make, initially I was just going to make them for the caregivers where my, at the assisted living where my mom lives, but then I thought, well, you know, there's people in the dining room, and then there's, you know, people that are behind the desk, and so I've just made a bunch of them. I think I've got 30 total or something like that, and I'm actually taping on a Sunday. And I'm going to deliver them on Monday. So maybe when you're watching this, I'll have to deliver them. And I can, I'm, next week I'm not going to be taping because I'm, I'm working, um, it's Dallas Apparel Mart this next week. And I, sometimes I help four or five times a year in one of the showrooms. And so I will be there Tuesday through Friday and highly unlikely that I'll get a lot of knitting done. So I, don't think I'll be taping next Monday. Um, it'll be the following week, but I got a ton of hair scrunchies. I think I made 15. So this is an I Love This Cotton, and I, I was I bought this to make when I was going to make the headbands, the tie headbands, and uh, so this is a brand new skein of I Love This Cotton, and so far I've gotten four, and I think I have enough left to get two more, so five, about six total out of one skein, but this is just, um, I think this is a one-by-one one rib, this is a two by two rib, garter stitch, and then I think this is just the stockinette stitch. So I got four of those, but I mean, just it's two different on, if you look this and that, so you can actually get two different hair scrunchies, wear it two different ways. So I like that, doing the variegated yarn, and then I had some two, I'll have left over to get some more of these bright ones made. This is just a, this is a one by one rib, and this is a garter stitch, and then I had another skein I got uh, I bought for 99 cents on clearance at Hobby Lobby. So I have these three, four, five, six, I got six total out of that one skein. So for 99 cents, I got six hair scrunchies. That's a pretty good deal. And then these two, I had made these last the week before. So I've got four of this, this color wave. And then this was a yarn I had left over for a, a scarf I made. It was like a, a handkerchief type scarf that I made. And I love it. Um, I think I don't remember the yarn, um, but I mean this. This is all the same yarn, right here. And it looks like totally different. It doesn't even look like it's the same yarn. So I and this, you know, this here's one side, and then here's that side. So it's two different scrunchies. So I got I made four of those. But I mean, I just look at that. There's that purple, and then there's that. So I. I got a lot of them done, and then I even tagged them, and I, I'll put a link to the P free PDF that you can print if you want to do tags. You can do them double-sided or one-sided. Um, one side has a scripture, the other side um, talks about nip, pray, share, and sharing the love of Jesus and how this item was prayed over. And so this scripture actually is John 10, 27, my sheep listen to my voice, I know them, and they follow. And let's see, this scripture says... Romans 12, 11, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Um, this one is 1 Chronicles 16, 11, search for the Lord and for his strength, continu continually seek him. So I just randomly put these tags. I don't. I, all I do is pray when I put them on Lord. I just pray that the person that received this, this is a scripture that they need to hear. And because um, I don't, I mean, sometimes I'm watching TV as I'm doing, so of course I'm not praying the entire time I'm making these, but when I'm finished with them, I pray over them. And when I, I'm going to put these in, I've got this box right here. And I'm going to deliver them in that. So I'm just going to stick them all in here. And then just kind of pray over them again before I, before I deliver them. Just asking God to, to the, lead the people that should receive this and that scripture that they should hear. Speak to them if they don't know you. That this prick their hearts and plant a seed. And that's all I do when I'm praying, praying over stuff. I don't always pray the entire time I'm making something. Sometimes it's before, sometimes it's after, sometimes it's during. It just depends on what I'm doing. But I was watching a show um, on Netflix. It's called, I think it's Down With Love or Down For Love, something like that. And there's only six episodes, and it's out of New Zealand, and it's uh, adults with, yeah, uh, adult, I think anywhere from 18 to 38, some of the people on there, with Down syndrome, and they're looking for love. And so it was just a sweet uplifting show and I made a lot of hair scrunchies during those episodes while I was knitting. So those are my knitting ones for the week and again next week I will probably not be taping just because I've got a lot going on um, and I've got a lot to do between now and tomorrow because I've got to make sure my mom's all set up for the week because I won't be visiting her as often. I'll just I'll come 
I'll be there on Monday, and then I won't be back until uh, the weekend. But she's really doing well, and I want to thank everybody for the prayers that you've been praying for her. She's adjusting better. I mean, we still have good days and bad days, but overall, just much better um, mindset and more positive and getting more engaged and involved with activities. In fact, they uh, did a taping there a few weeks ago where they're doing some promos for their um, – website and she was in a couple of them and so she was really excited about that but I mean it's just it's definitely going better and once I released it to God and just because he's in control not me my life has been so much better but with that being said now I'd like to start I would like to read my devotion for nip from nitpreshare.com and it's called teamwork and there's this story that I've been wanting to share and I just keep forgetting so this is what it, it has to do with this but the scripture is Ephesians 4 16 and it's the new living translation he makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. I like that translation too. It just gives it more, um, you know, I just can visualize it better and what it is to be a part of a team and part of a, the body of Christ. And when I look at my knit, pray, crochet group, while we are all different, God works through our diversity and it's through his work in each of us that we all enhance each other's existence. We inspire and encourage one another. We are able to use each of our own individual gifts to offer back to him. And so that's, it takes teamwork for us to do what we're doing in this ministry. And while our ministry may never see the fruits of its labor, we did have someone from upper management visit our group. We met at a local restaurant and she had heard about our group. And unfortunately, I was not there. I was out of town. I was so bummed when I heard about this. And this, I think this happened in May. And I just, I, I wrote it down to remind myself to write about it. And so, of course, you know, this is coming from the other people. So this is not exactly how it happened, but it's in a nutshell kind of what happened uh, from what I can remember of them telling me. But the woman from corporate, she'd heard about our group, and she wanted to let them know that what we're doing makes a difference. That I don't remember how many years ago. I, I want to say her son is in his 20s or early 30s. I don't remember the exact details. But she said that um, she had an, an ex, a pregnancy that was not, a, you know, was not expected. And her mother, who was a believer, said, before you consider an abortion, would you please go to this pregnancy crisis center and she took her there and they did the sonogram she heard the heartbeat and they gave her a pair of knit baby booties and she said that after that experience she decided to keep the baby and her son is now however old he's a young adult I think and um, she said that meant so much to her she still to this day has those baby booties so I mean I get teary-eyed from her telling that story because you know that that it could be another knitting group 25 years down the road that's doing the same thing and someone will come to them and say hey you know what i know it wasn't your group but a group like yours is what saved my son's life and kept me from aborting him and stories like this is why we keep doing what we're doing and again it takes teamwork for this to happen we are able to seek god's will together we are co-laborers and as a group we are able to make a difference in god's kingdom through all of our handmade items whether it's a hat for the homeless or a baby hat or a baby blanket or a scarf, whatever it is, the person receiving it, we will more than likely never meet. But we pray for them and we for them to have an encounter with Jesus. If they don't need, need, know Jesus, that's what I do with these hair scrunchies. I'm praying if these, the person receiving this doesn't know Jesus, that they have an encounter with him, they find him, or the seeds are planted. So as a Christian crafter, whether you, you, you knit, crochet, um, you... I consider baking a craft. Um, I have a woman who is in another one of my small groups who does gardening and she makes flowers and she gives her flowers away. I'm hearing about what we're doing. It's giving her, you know, the encouragement to keep doing what she's doing. Don't think what you're doing doesn't matter because it, do it does. And God sees how you're ser serving in the name of Jesus. And that's why we do it. We don't do it for the human accolades. We do it because it's what Jesus wants us to do. And he sees what we're doing and he knows our heart. Do you prioritize being with other believers? Because honestly, if you don't have a group, I, I don't know what I would do without my knitting ministry. Those women are so special to me. Um, but just think about things you can do to take steps to make it a part of your weekly schedule. Search on the internet and start one on your own. And it doesn't have to be for just Christians. It can be for everybody, but encourage those who are Christians to be a part of it so that you can make be planting the seeds in those who might not know Jesus. And I, I just, like I said, I've been blessed to have this my knitting ladies because not only do we knit and crochet together but we pray for each other too i can send out a text on my group me text and say hey could you pray for my grandson he's running a fever right now 
and they will do it. I know they'll do it. And it's just nice to have that support system. And it's truly a gift. I, I have to pinch myself sometimes that I am able to meet every week with these ladies and do what we're doing with other sisters in Christ. I, I am so blessed and I'm so thankful. And if you don't have a group like that, really, I encourage you, it doesn't take much to get started. And remember, just two people, that's all it takes to start. That's how my group started, two of us. And now we're anywhere from five to 15 or 20 people. It just depends on the week. We may, small groups are start back up at our church, so we may get some new people, two or three new people. And so I'm just praying that God lead other women to this group that knit or crochet that one be a part of our ministry. I'd like to end with my prayer now. Father God, thank you for my sisters in Christ. These friendships are centered around sharing Jesus, our gift that I don't ever want to take for granted. I lift those up to you who are searching for communities such as this to join in their area. Open their eyes to where they can serve you and meet other people who will encourage them in their faith journey. I pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you again for joining me for episode 45. If you like this episode, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Oh, you know what? I forgot to share with you. This is totally, doesn't. I mean, it kind of has to do with knitting. My friend Patty, she found this pencil bag at Walmart, and she said it was kind of expensive. It was $7, and I said, well, I bet I can buy it on Amazon. And Because I don't know if you've seen all the videos of people using these poppets for stitch markers. So... I'm not, I just, this is, I, I numbered with a Sharpie, one, two, and there's five. So this goes up to 50 rows. Hers was only one-sided. And I got this one on Amazon for $4.99, and it's two-sided. I only label the 50, but it could go up to 100 rows. So if you want an inexpensive row counter that can also be multifunctional as a, you know, I've got my, this is my, you know, I've got my little notions in here. I've got some... A tape measure and my crochet hook and a pair of scissors are in here somewhere. Oh, these are these are these nifty little scissor, scissors that I got on my Nitty McCurley retreat, and I, I'll put a link to where you can purchase these because they're great scissors. So anyway, I forgot to share that with you. I was super excited, and I'll put a link to where I got this on Amazon for four ninety nine. What a bargain, and I love it because especially when you're traveling, I have to wear the stitch marker thing around my neck or I put it on, I have one that I put on my finger, but this is just easier and I can just punch in one, two, you know, anyway, you get the idea. Uh, but that is a great nifty idea that my friend Patty found this and then I found a better one on Amazon and I ordered two of them because I can't just order one because what if someone wants one that I know and they can't get it on Amazon, I gotta have a backup one or I just need a backup one because I have a problem with having knitting bags and little project bags. I love them and I can't ever have enough of them. I don't, are, am I the only one? I just, I don't know. I just, they're so fun. And, I, but the dangerous part is I can have one project in each bag and forget about it. And I, I pull something and I go, Oh, there's that set of knitting needles that I was needing. Um, and because I, I bought another pair because I couldn't find them. So that is the one disadvantage of having too many knitting bags. But I, in my book, you just can't have too many knitting bags. Have a blessed week. Thank you for joining me. And episode 46 will be in a couple weeks. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to skip next week since I won't get a lot of knitting done. But I just, again, thank you for joining me. Keep knitting, crocheting, crocheting and sharing the love of Jesus through your hand-knit items.